Hi. Now suppose we have a snooker ball at rest on a table and we move the cue back and we give the ball a gentle tap. The ball accelerates during contact with the cue and moves off slowly in the direction of the applied force. Now suppose this time we hit the snooker ball a lot harder with the cue. This time the ball moves off a lot faster. So the greater the force, the greater the acceleration of the ball during contact with the cue. Now let's return the ball back to its initial position. Now Sir Isaac Newton discovered that if you applied a force to a particle, let's just say we illustrate it as a force F, and we look at the acceleration produced, then there is a direct link between the force and the acceleration. And that link was that the force applied was proportional, was directly proportional to the acceleration produced. And this led to the equation that that force F was equal to a constant multiplied by the acceleration. And that constant turned out to be the mass of the particle M. So F equals MA. And this particular equation is known as Newton's second law. Let's just write that up here. Newton's second law. Now, you'll also see some people mention this equation as the equation of motion. So uh, do learn it as that as well, the equation of motion. So let's have a look at these units. The force here is measured in what is called Newtons, okay? Force is in Newtons. And the standard symbol for a Newton is just simply an N. The mass is measured in kilograms, so just write that in, in kilograms, and the acceleration, A, okay, that would be measured in meters per second per second. Now we should look at some examples that use this equation, F equals MA, the equation of motion. So suppose we had a particle, let's say a particle of mass 5 kilograms, let's just write the 5 kilograms inside, and to this particle we apply a force, say to the right, of 10 newtons. And this force is going to produce an acceleration in that direction, to the right. And we'll mark that in as A. Now, to apply F equals MA, the equation of motion, what we tend to do is write this, okay, R, which stands for resolving or applying Newton's second law. And we're showing that we're applying it to the right, okay, taking the right as positive. Remember, force and acceleration are vector quantities, so we need to obey this positive rule. 10 newtons acts to the right, okay, so it's going to be the force plus 10, or just simply 10, and that equals the mass, 5, multiplied by a positive A, because the acceleration also acts to the right. And if we divide both sides by 5, we can see that that acceleration is going to be 2, and the units would be 2 meters per second per second. Okay, well let's just take another example again. We'll still stick with our 5 kilogram mass, but this time, let's suppose we still got our 10 newton force acting to the right, but maybe there's 
some resistance on our particle opposing this force to the right. Let's say it's a resistance, say, of 4 newtons. Then what would the acceleration be this time? Well, we'll call it A again, and we're going to resolve in the direction of motion. We'll resolve to the right, taking to the right as positive, indicated by the arrow. So we're looking at the resultant force F acting on this particle in this direction. So we've got 10, but the 4 newtons acts in the opposite direction, so it's going to be negative. So it's going to be minus the 4. So you can see we've got a resultant force of 6 newtons acting towards the right. And this is equal to the mass, 5, multiplied by the new acceleration, A. So what we've got here is 6 equals 5A. And dividing both sides by 5 gives us the acceleration is 6 fifths, or 1.2 meters per second per second. So you can see, once we've got this resistance in, the acceleration is reduced to, compared with what it was here. Now suppose we look at one more example, okay? With gain, we'll take our 5 kilogram mass. We'll have our 10 newton force acting to the right. But suppose we have a resistance this time of 10 newtons. Then what's our acceleration going to be? What's actually happening to this particle? Well, if we resolve to the right, apply that equation of motion, then what we've got here is a force of 10 newtons to the right minus 10 newtons to the left, a resultant of 0 newtons. And this is equal to the mass, 5, times the acceleration A. So we've got no resultant force, and it equals 5A. And that would mean that the acceleration was equal to 0, 0 meters per second per second. Now when we have an acceleration that is 0, this can mean one of two things. It can mean that the particle is either in equilibrium, not moving, or it's moving at a constant speed. Now this is just a simple introductory tutorial on Newton's second law. In later videos, I'll be exploring this equation a lot further. We'll be looking at forces inclined at angles to one another. We'll be looking at particles moving on inclined planes or connected by light in extensible strings, passing over pulleys. So, as I say, I hope this has given you an introduction, and uh, if you found it useful, hopefully you'll find the other videos in this series just as useful.